comes to wildlife photography and especially testing out a new camera, um, the one thing that you want to do is work on something local and close to home. And so at the moment, whilst I'm over here in Ireland, one of the projects that I thought I'd get out and do is shoot some urban birds. Um, you know, all of the older houses here, the great rooftops, provide a fantastic place for starlings. And I think they're going to be the subject that I'm going after. I mean, looking across the rooftops over here, I can already see quite a number gathering on the kind of little wires and stuff like that. So this should make for some interesting pictures. And you know, when you try out a new camera uh, like I am with the Z6 at the moment, you don't want to go too far afield. You don't want to go on a, some epic trip uh, out to the Arctic or the, you know, anywhere like that. Because if you find that there's something with a camera that you don't understand yet, or you, you find problems with it, you don't want that to happen when you've got some incredible wildlife coming down towards you. Whereas some local birds that you can focus on and get things wrong and try different things out is a great place to start. And of course, it also makes a chance to make some interesting images in your local area. If you're out for five, 10 minutes, or you've even got half an hour in your lunch break, you can always get out and get some interesting shots. So uh, let's get to it. So to get started, I'm first scouting out some locations in different areas where I can get my shots. And the images I'm going for today are not um, just standard bird on a stick, but instead in that urban environment. And for that image, you've got to have the context, the, the chimney pots, the sky dishes, all of those different things where the birds are going to perch and um, to get those different um, and kind of more interesting images. You know, commercially for sales, I work with people like the RSPB and stuff like that. And they're always looking for different images of birds, especially in urban environments, because of course, they're the sort of things that people don't always take. You know, we love to see birds out in the kind of distance wilds and stuff like that, so why would we shoot pictures in urban areas? But you know, they, they tell good stories and that's what really lots of good images are about. So just looking across here, I can see starlings down um, across the kind of wires and sitting on the chimney pots and those kind of TV aerials that are going to make some really interesting images. So I'm going to walk down these steps and see if I can shoot across the rooftop to see if I can get some good shots. But you know, I've got the camera kitted up on the 300 2.8 uh, with a Z6 here. That means I can fast respond um, to anything that's going to come out. I've noticed actually that a couple of birds have just sat up here with these sky dishes. So I might photograph them quickly and see if I can get a couple of images there. But you know, it's looking quite good. You might not be able to see it from where you're positioned, but down the side of these houses, there are a lovely group of satellite dishes that's making a really nice composition. And at the end on the telegraph pole, regularly a rook keeps coming out and sitting on the side, as well as starlings jumping in the gaps between them. So what I'm doing is picking out the focus and getting the birds small in the frame with the satellite dishes to give the context of that kind of urban environment. And the Z6 is doing really quite nicely. The autofocus is picking up, locking on the subject as it's in those gaps. Um, sometimes it tracks a little bit too fast because you know, if I hover over a dish in front, it pings straight towards it. And that's something I'm gonna have to dial into the settings and make sure I've got tightened up. You know, the EVF and that live histogram, really useful for getting the maximum out of the files and making sure I don't clip my highlights. But all in all, it's coming together quite well. So I've moved myself down from one of the top roads uh, to come down this staircase that's given me a nice viewpoint across the houses. And this is a really good chance to pick out the birds uh, on the aerials and the chimney pots to give those kind of contextual images a bit more. Now, especially when you're working uh, for commercial clients or anything like that, one of the important things to think about is space within your images. A lot of us like to shoot those really close up images of wildlife, uh, and the ones we really like to look at, and you can see all the details and everything. But especially when you sell your pictures, when you're giving them to clients, you've got to remember that the, how they're going to use them. If they're using them in publications, for example, you're going to want space for text. So when I'm shooting these pictures, what I'm looking for is areas where I can compose the bird small in the frame, leave a lot of space that's open uh, for use in that commercial sense, whether it's for publications, web use, or just designing the page around it you know, always think about your end client and and what that picture is going to be you know if they're for yourself of course you know shoot them exactly how you want them um, but thinking about that is a really good way uh, to get in the mindset especially in times of actually making a portfolio of shots you know if you shoot the same picture every single day uh, you shoot that tight frame perfect portrait 
it does seem to get a bit boring. So picking out those detail shots, those more landscape approach images is a really nice way to do it. Um, and you know, working with this Z6, actually, it's coming together quite nicely. One of the things that's really handy is the fact that I can move that autofocus point right out um, to kind of the outside of the frame. In my D850, as much as we've got a much better spread than we had on the D810, one thing that's really nice about uh, the Z6 is that the autofocus points pretty much cover 99% of the frame. So I can push my autofocus right out uh, to the far reaches, put a subject in the corner, looking into the image, having a lot of space and making a really nice contextual shot. And um, that's really nice to do. And of course, you know, being able to have that autofocus on the whole time, making sure you're uh, confirming that perfect focus is really nice. And you don't have to rely on the classic uh, compose, um, you know, focus re compose uh, to get your shot you know that has a kind of higher level of error than holding over getting that autofocus point and locking it in and this has given me good options when I'm looking across uh, the, the houses in front of me here where I can see good cover starlings sitting up but currently they're a little bit far away now I've just turned around because there was a couple of starlings on these rooftops behind me. You have some good chances for those uh, little images, those closer shots of them on chimney pots and stuff like that. And the Z6 was performing quite well. You know, one of the things that's really nice, um, and I actually got mentioned in a comment of my last video, is the change in the position of the joystick. Now on my D850 and my D500, it's positioned to the left hand side of the AF on button. That's, that's good, it's a good place when you can easily access it. But it doesn't always feel perfectly comfortable. Where they've situated it below the AF on button on the Z6, it's actually really, really nice indeed. And I find it a really natural place to leave my thumb and, and move that autofocus point. That's great when you want to quickly change compositions and move your autofocus point from one side of the frame to the other in no time whatsoever. Really, really nice. And I find it really, really comfortable to use. I think I can spot a couple of Stalin, so I'm gonna get back to it. Now, of course, when it comes to photographing birds, you'd be absolutely lost without your binoculars to pick stuff out. And one thing that I can actually notice up in front of me um, is that the starlings are kind of congregating around one or two houses. You know, there's a good group of them all sat on the rooftops there and they keep dipping down and coming back up. And what that says to me when I'm looking at it is that likely they've got some bird feeders in the garden. So that might be a good place to go and explore because the birds well, they're a lot closer. That's gonna mean I'm gonna be able to have those chances at getting those nice tight portraits and a few different images to the ones that I've been picking out on the rooftops. So I think I might wait here for a little bit longer, see if I can pick out some shots on the aerials, and then I'm gonna wander down that way and see if I can find some nice close starlings for those final portraits that I'll go after this morning. So with the sun coming out quite bright now, it's probably time to call it a day. But this morning has been a great chance to put the Z through its paces and see how it performs out in the field. And the autofocus is probably the biggest thing that I've wanted to try on, see how it works in different scenarios. And what I found is that for pinpointing subjects, it works really quite nicely. You know, picking them out in the landscape when they're small in the frame, it works very well. You've got so many autofocus points, that means that you can really position a subject pretty much wherever you want and still get that autofocus point right over the top to pinpoint it and, and bring it out within the image. Now, when it comes to moving subjects, especially birds in flight, that's where the autofocus does start to lag, especially compared to like the D500 and D850. 
you're going to want to have to change into one of those tracking modes using the uh, multi-pattern tracking uh, to get the best out of it and still then it doesn't focus as quickly as I'd probably want it to and I'm used to with my D850. Now one thing that is of course useful with the Z6 is the EVF and today we've had quite changing lighting conditions where it's been quite bright and then uh, cloudy and the EVF with that live histogram means that it's quite easy for me to adjust the exposure and not only get it right but to get it as good as I possibly can. Using that live histogram I can move my exposure right to the right hand side and make sure that I'm getting the maximum detail from the files that I'm working with. Uh, something that's really important if you want to get the absolute best from the images you're producing. Um, and a really useful feature if you're getting started in photography, you're going to find that super helpful in complex lighting situations. So in terms of a camera for wildlife photography, is the Z6 up for it? Well, it certainly is depending on what you're shooting. I think if you are more an action-based photographer where you want the ultra-fast autofocus that's going to lock immediately, a D500 might be a better choice. But of course, then you're missing out on that FX um, format camera. And you know, you're, you're losing some of the other features that you're going to have with the Z6, especially in terms of video, the key thing that for me, I'm really after. And I think overall, it's a great compromise piece of kit. And you know, it's one that I can see myself certainly using, not only um, as my video camera as a photographer, but also for getting out on days when I wanna shoot stills and have something a lot lighter in the bag. I know that for birds in flight and for anything where action is going to be the sole focus of the day, it's probably not the camera I'm gonna choose. But as a backup camera, one that I'm gonna throw in my bag for multiple situations, and especially if I wanna use some of my manual focus lenses with focus peaking, it's going to be a really great addition. And I think if you're the sort of photographer who doesn't only shoot action, but also shoots landscapes, shoots some street stuff, shoots people as well, it's a great compromise that's gonna give you fantastic performance for multiple things. Um, so certainly, I definitely, definitely recommend it. If you guys have got any thoughts, any questions about the uh, Z6, drop them in the comments below, more than happy to get back to you. Um, but I will say this, you know, I've been testing this out, um, Nikon have loaned it to me for the last week, and it was really to get an opinion if I wanted one for myself. And I can tell you right now that this is certainly something I will be adding to my bag in 2019. I think it's a great camera with a great set of features, and especially for me looking for the video stuff, it's going to be something that's integral uh, for my Nikon kit. So it's highly recommended and uh, yeah, a very enjoyable camera to use.